Netflix's new documentary, Tiger King, makes you want to say, God bless America. Just in case anybody thinks I'm joking, no, this is absolutely the best of America. Think about it. What other country in the world can someone say, I am a redneck with a dyed blonde mullet who is not only gay, but has two husbands and I love to shoot things and blow them up. And in order for me to honor my dead brother, I want to build a giant wildlife sanctuary with hundreds of predators. Oh my God, nowhere else in the world would you ever, ever hear anything like that and people be able to keep a straight face. They would think it's absolutely a joke. You say that in the US and people are like, "Mm mm-hmm, okay, and? Grab your popcorn because it is going to get weird. This documentary is ostensibly about Joe Exotic, who also called himself the Tiger King. And he was, or is, a a gay man living in Oklahoma, which is generally not considered the most gay-friendly territory, who decided to open a wildcat sanctuary. His specialty, I guess you could say, was tigers, but he had many lions and mountain lions, cheetahs, all that kind of good stuff. Now, this story starts back in the 80s, one of Joe's big money makers was taking a lot of these animals around to zoos. Now, of course, he wouldn't take adult tigers and lions. That would be incredibly dangerous and weird. But he would take the cubs around to zoos and people would pay. They didn't say exactly, but they would pay some money to be able to pet them and to get pictures taken with them and whatnot. It was apparently very popular in um, that Oklahoma, Nebraska the Western Midwest type of area, people would do it a lot. And they said that he was making somewhere around ten to $40,000 in a weekend. Well, this, of course, ruffled a bunch of feathers. Enter Joe's arch nemesis, Carol Baskins. Carol Baskin was a woman from Florida who ran a place called Big Cat Rescue. Now, Big Cat Rescue was ostensibly an animal rights group that would take in these previously privately owned um, exotic animals, mostly focusing on the cats. But we come to find out later on that what seems to be just an argument between animal rights versus a private zoo is not the case. Carol Zhu does exactly the same thing that she complains of Joe Exotic and other private zoos about. She has people go in and they take pictures with the animals and they can pet some of the animals for money. We also see a situation where Joe Exotic, his crew is not exactly the, well, it's not exactly Oklahoma's best and brightest. One guy worked there because he saw an ad on Craigslist. People were living in somewhat horrible conditions. They were eating expired meat from Walmart, not getting paid very much at all. But it was sort of a second chance for a lot of his people. Now, Carol Baskin, on the other hand, it seems, had all volunteer help. And there were sort of levels to it. She had a lot of seemingly middle-aged women who, I guess, needed a hobby. And they decided that they would want to take care of big cats. All right, cool, cool. Again, it's America. Now, America, unlike a lot of countries, has one overriding rule that keeps us all happy and polite and safe. And that rule is, don't F with me and I won't F with you. This is a rule that Carol violated. Now, we come to find out Carol is incredibly rich. How did she get rich? Her husband died under mysterious circumstances. The family and the ex-wife of Carol's previous husband, they all think she did it. 
They think she murdered him because he wanted to divorce her and she didn't want to go back to living a poor lifestyle. Ooh, that's interesting. Okay, that's problem number one. So Carol is getting in the business of all of these other private zoos in order to perhaps increase the business of her own zoo. So she could become the queen, I guess you'd say, of private zoos, be one of the only places in the U.S. that you could go and pet these kind of wild animals. And she's living the life. In addition to Carol, we find all of these other zoo owners. And there are a few that they focus on, but the biggest one we would say is Doc Antle or Bhagavan Doc Antle. Later on, we'll see that uh, there's a man, Jeff Lowe, who comes in and buys Joe Exotic's zoo. And so what we find from all of these is that all of these people who own Big Cat Rescues, Big Cat, or Big, shall we say, Big Cat Zoos, they're all deviant lifestyles. Joe Exotic, not that being gay is deviant, but the man had two husbands two and we come to find out later one of them wasn't actually gay he just i don't know he just kind of liked it but later he was stupid the secretary oh my god the other problem is doc doc antle he has like eight wives he built houses on his i can't remember how many it was like 50 acres of wildlife reserve that he created and they all live in different houses and they're all predators they prey on young people so they'll get like in the case of doc antle he'll find women that are like 18 20 who are young kind of naive and he will ingratiate them into this lifestyle well we find that joe exotic did exactly the same thing in a very low rent way So he had his first husband, John Finley, and then he had his second husband, Maldonado, who shot himself. And then later he starts dating another guy. Like, dang, dude. And these were all young men that he convinced with promises of a flashy lifestyle and getting to hang out with dangerous animals. And then we get into the last guy, Jeff Lowe. He's seems to be a a kind of a grifter a con artist he has a hot wife and they have orgies in vegas where he owns some tigers of his own he would sneak them into hotels and find young party going women in vegas and be like hey want to come to my hotel room and pet my tiger except he meant an actual tiger these are just absolutely insane and crazy people now the main thrust of this show is what exactly happened to joe exotic and it goes from his highlight in the 80s where his zoo is doing well he's got that business well carol and her associates she has like a million followers on facebook or or something like that they wrote letters to all these malls and got joe exotics business shut down so from this we see joe's life starting to decline what happens later is he starts his own video channel like on youtube or something and he just spends the whole time bashing carol baskin so now you have two people effing with each other that of course that of course means war There are lawsuits that go back and forth. Joe Exotic lost big time. He was about to lose all of his stuff. Most people would settle and just take the moral victory. Carol Baskin, uh uh-uh. She wanted everything. She wanted all the cats. She wanted the property. She tried to get Joe's mom's house. Oh, Carol, Carol, Carol. And that's when Jeff Lowe was able to swoop in and perform his con and start to steal things now where things get crazy is jeff hired a guy who maybe spent time in jail maybe had killed someone in the past we don't know and there is eventually a plot 
to kill Carol Baskin. Now, lots of people had said, yeah, uh, that bee has to die. We should kill her, blah, blah, blah. But no, there was never any attempt that we know of. There was never any plot. But somehow at this point, things got real. Jeff's handyman, who was, who did time in jail, potentially was a murderer, he went down to Florida where Carol lived and he just got high and eventually ended up in South Carolina. Well, somehow the FBI was involved with this, tracking it, and it's a whole thing where they eventually arrest Joe Exotic. Joe loses his chorus case, of course. Now, there, in my opinion, there was a lot of prosecutorial misconduct. They do all the typical U.S. prosecutor tricks, which usually involve you, you've got a weak case. The case against him for murder was fairly weak. So they threw in all these other charges of exotic animal trafficking. They didn't do it separately, but they did it together to compound it to make him look more guilty. People are much more likely to just vote guilty on all the charges. It's a whole big thing. There's plenty of other channels who I'm sure would be happy to uh, look into that for you. But at any rate, what we end up with in Tiger King is the story of the descent of one man just trying to live his life into potential murder, international exotic animal dealing, and all sorts of mayhem. Since we're all trapped in our houses with the plague, check this out. Give it 15 minutes. If you don't find this incredibly riveting, I don't know what to say about you. Go watch a Disney movie. All right. If you like the Tiger King, if you like to pet the kitties, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe. I'll be back soon.